PC Sonic, the heart of your system. Brandy here from Kit Guru, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new mouse from Asus. So it just so happens that I was at Overclockers UK today, and one of the reps was here, and he has actually got a sample of the brand new Rog Chakra mouse. So this mouse it currently isn't available. There isn't even any like proper review samples. It just so happened that he had one with him today, and was like, "Do you want to take a look at it?" And I was like, "Yes," and I would love to film the unboxing as well. Uh, so here we are. So the Rog Chakra is going to be kind of their new flagship mouse we don't actually have a confirmed retail price yet overclockers uk have got it up for pre-order 150 pounds but like i say that isn't going to be might possibly not be the final price it might be cheaper we think it might be more around 120 pounds but it could also be more expensive as well but you can currently pre-order it for 150 pounds on the overclockers website so the mouse itself uh, here it is this is kind of like the first sample i'm very excited to get into the box and just take a look at it i have only got it for the one day so it's not going to be a full review of the mouse uh, but i will see what sort of things come with it uh, what's what you get in the box uh, what specifications it has it does actually have quite a cool a few cool features that I'm excited to check out. The box itself, it is some pretty nice packaging. You've got the black and red ROG packaging. It is going to be their new flagship mouse, like I say, and it has got, you can see immediately, it's got the Asus Aura Sync RGB lighting, and it is a wireless mouse as well. So it's got wireless connectivity. It does come with a dongle, like a USB dongle, and it also has Bluetooth connectivity as well. And it also uses the key wireless charging. So if you're aware, Asus has like a range of mouse mats that have the wireless charging built into them. So you can uh, charge this cable, uh, this mouse using a cable, a USB-C cable, or you can also charge it using a key compatible wireless mouse pad as well. On the back of the box, we've got a picture of the kind of mouse itself and it has got this quite cool functionality it's a really modular mouse and there's sort of different parts you can interchange in and out I will open the box up and we can take a closer look at that at the moment so it has the dual wireless compatibility and you have got a wired USB cable as well if you want to use it as a wired mouse it's 16,000 dpi and it uses an optical sensor with a 1000 hertz polling rate and it and that is 1000 hertz polling rate when you use it in the wired mode and the um USB dongle mode it probably isn't that over Bluetooth it's programmable and it has a removable joystick which is something that I've not personally seen on a mouse before uh, it's a pretty cool feature I'm definitely going to try that one out and it has a 15 minute fast wire charge for up to 12 hours of gameplay or it will charge wirelessly like I said with the key so that's quite good if you happen for your mouse to suddenly run out of charge uh, that does happen quite often actually that I find with wireless peripherals is that you'll be using it and you think it'll be fine and then the next minute or if you've left it on accidentally overnight and it's not gone to sleep or something then uh, it is quite nice that you can get it up and going again in 15 minutes from what i can tell i have taken a little look at the specifications uh, normal use i imagine it's probably with rgb off as well you will get up to 79 hours of battery life so that is pretty impressive obviously like i say this isn't a full review but that's what asus claims so that's quite impressive for a wireless mouse and then you've also got options to change to dpi on the fly and you've also got all the kind of attachable modular stuff which is what I think makes this mouse a little bit different to what I've seen before. So down the bottom it's just got some more in-depth kind of specifications what system requirements you need so you've got Windows 10 and then it also works with kind of the ROG Armory crate software as well and then you've got the package contents which I'm going to open up and show you. So this sample has already been opened it's been passed around the office so as well much as we kind of tried to get it back into the box as as well as I can do it has been at Overclockers UK here today being passed around so as far as I know everything should be in here but we will we will see what we get so the mouse itself it looks to be kind of a larger size mouse it's definitely it's quite a slim mouse but the actual size is reasonably large although I do have smaller hands and it does seem to suit me you've got kind of this thumb rest sticking out here it looks to be a pretty nice shape we'll definitely take a closer look at the mouse itself in a moment but first I do want to take a look at all the different things we get with it so there's a sheet of cardboard we've got the instruction manual so that's going to tell uh, it's lots of different languages by the looks of things 
It tells you how to kind of take apart the different modular parts of the mouse. You've got the different features telling you what all the different buttons do, how to control the joystick, how to set up the different DPI. You've got more on the features. It's actually a reasonably in-depth manual because sometimes you can find that the manuals that come with the products can be pretty useless from my experience, but this one is actually reasonably good. Yeah, and more about the different device features in lots and lots of different languages. So we've also got a little ROG sticker, a metal ROG sticker. I think those come with pretty much all of their products. When I did my ROG Helios build, every kind of ROG component I opened up actually had like a ROG sticker of some kind in it. In this bag, it looks like we have a travel pouch. So that's got the kind of ROG branding on it. It's made of that nice sort of soft ne neoprene material and it's got like a fleecy lining on the inside and a little net pouch there, I guess, so you can put the cable in. That is gonna be a USB dot, that's USB to USB-C adapter. And this, so this is the little kit that has the Omron switches in. So this mouse uses Omron switches and Asus have made the Omron switches modular. So the switches that are in the mouse at the moment are the lighter blue switches. And then you also get a set of Omron switches which are like the silver, which are heavier switches. So they have a different feel for them. So you can customize the mouse depending on what kind of feel you want from the clicks, which is quite a nice feature I would say to have customization like that on a mouse also to make it modular so if you have a problem with the Omron switches I know there's been a few mice out there that have those Omron 50 million click switches but they've been kind of dying earlier than they're meant to so that is quite nice they're quite they're easy to switch out on this mice if you do have a problem you've got a pair of tweezers in there and you've also got the option to remove the joystick and just put in a little blank filler as well if you don't want to use the joystick that comes with the mouse you can take that out This is for the RGB bit on the back of the mouse. So when you remove this little panel here, it has this ROG logo. And then if you want, you can take out the ROG logo and just put in a blank square. So you can have a blank circle of RGB lighting or you can have the actual ROG logo on there. And we've also got the cable as well. So it is a braided cable which is nice to see. It's a USB-C cable, which is nice to see. There's no micro USB here, so it makes it compatible for, uh, if you've already got like an existing cable, it will be easy to replace and things. And also USB-C is just easier to plug in and unplug as well. It just feels that a little bit more stable to me, micro USB. It tends to be quite easy to break. I did have it, want my ducky keyboard that I have uses micro USB and I just don't like how it feels. USB-C to me is a much better connection, so I'm very happy that Asus have used that. And that's it. That's everything that comes in the box. Let's put that to one side. It is a nice box. So I would say it's now time to take the mouse apart and see how easy it is to change out the different components. So inside you've got the USB. I've just taken on this back panel here that's clear and then it's connected on with a magnet so it does seem to hold in place reasonably well. I've never seen anything like that on a mouse before actually. That slides off and then inside you've got the USB dongle so that's what you use for the wireless connectivity if you don't want to use Bluetooth. I imagine if you've got access to connect the mouse using the USB dongle, I would because you probably will get better battery life out of it. And like it says on the specifications, you do also get a better uh, polling rate as well, a faster polling rate. And you can remove the ROG logo that comes out. You can put circle in and this does light up. If we turn it on, it lights up. So that would light up with a ROG logo or you can light up with a circle logo. And then these, the switches come off as well. The left and the right click. You get your finger in the right spot, there it is. That lifts off 
and then you can get to the Omron switch using the tweezers you can switch out for a different switch so the blue ones are lighter and I prefer them I have already tried this mouse out as it was being passed around really easy to take out slightly fiddly because they are small but pretty straightforward at the same time Obviously it's not something you'd want to do on a regular basis, but they have made it pretty simple to do. That goes back on there with a magnet. There we go. So the left click is now the heavier switch and the right click is now the lighter switch. I do definitely prefer the lighter switch. The, the heavier switch feels like maybe you're battling with it a little bit, but the, the lighter switch does feel really nice and quite clicky and very responsive. I am a fan of the Omron switches. I, a few mice that I've reviewed use the Omron switches. So on the bottom of the mouse, we'll take a closer look at the mouse itself. It feels like a medium weight mouse, uh, which for a wireless mouse, I would say it's quite lightweight for a wireless mouse it's probably not the lightest wireless mouse that i've tried but it, it seems like a fair weight i do personally prefer a heavier mouse anyway those of you that like a lighter mouse aren't going to get on with this but with most wireless mice they've got quite a lot of weight to them because the battery's in there so decent weight i'd say a normal size it's not a large mouse it's a really nice i'd say it's more suited to those of you that have a palm grip because it does have the kind of thumb rest to me it just feels like it has that nice kind of sleek shape it hasn't got like a big peak at the top here i reckon you could actually use it pretty much all grips would probably be fine with this mouse fingertip grip palm grip it feels pretty suitable for all of them really and it has a nice kind of slant it slants from the left down to the right slightly and then uh, the front here is where you'll find the USB-C connector. You've got on the bottom, you've got a button to pair. So that'll be for the Bluetooth. You've got a slider for off and then also wireless connectivity. And then that's the button to change the DPI. So that's not easy to get to. It's not something that you could maybe change on the fly, the DPI settings. Uh, normally most mice tend to have like a button at the top here that under the scroll wheel that you can change the DPI with quickly whether you want to jump between when you're like taking a sniper shot and then go back into kind of normal gameplay the DPI button on this mouse is underneath which I guess stops you accidentally pressing it but if you like to switch between different DPI regularly it's not particularly easy to get to the mouse itself is made out of plastic so even though it does feel pretty solid, I'm going to squeeze it. I always do a squeeze test. It, it, has, it does actually have no flex to it, which is surprising. Normally, I'm going to put... This does look quite flimsy, so I'm not going to push on it too hard. Actually, it has pretty much zero flex to it. That is actually surprisingly solid, considering the whole thing's made out of plastic. It does rattle, though. I know that's a pet peeve of some people. The scroll will, yeah, the scroll will definitely rattles. I mean, I'll hold it. I'll hold it up to my microphone. It doesn't wobble though. It it makes a noise, but it doesn't wobble. It's quite a nice scroll wheel. I like it. It does feel very nice. Right, let's get my laptop and I'll connect the mouse up to it and we can take a look at the features it's got within the software. But I do quite like the look of it. I'm hoping Rog are going to send me a, an actual sample of this because I would really like to try it out in a full review because obviously I've only got it for the day here so I can't do a full review of it. But it does, it is a really nice mouse. They've done a pretty good job. I like the RGB as well. This bit here, you could probably customize that. Maybe like 3D print like your own logo to go on there. Or you could put a sticker over the little RGB circle and make your own logo to shine through the back of the mouse. It's a really kind of cool looking design. You've also got a couple of buttons. So the joystick and then you've got like a backwards and forwards button like when you're browsing the web. I imagine you can probably reprogram those. The scroll wheel has a rubber texture to it. That feels really nice. 
I do like it. I'm going to have to go grab a mouse pad, I think, because I do want to check how it glides as well. But I'll just grab my laptop. I've now got the ROG Chakram connected up to my laptop. I thought it was going to be pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, that isn't actually the case. I've connected it up and the ROG Armory Crate software doesn't actually detect the mouse. I have got the latest version. I checked with the guy from Asus. We can't seem to get it to work between us. It just doesn't seem to detect it. So I think the problem is that the mouse is probably actually too new for the version of software that's available. The ROG website doesn't actually have the page up for the Chakram yet. It is that new that they didn't have it on their website so there's nowhere to download a version of the Armory Crate software that would work with the mouse. So from what I can tell though you're going to be able to change the RGB lighting, you can probably change the DPI settings, you're also going to be able to kind of reprogram the joystick I imagine. It's probably going to have pretty much the same functionality as you'd expect from any mouse. I just can't show you it unfortunately. I have got the Armory Crate software open and ready to go, I just can't use it. So what I am going to do though is I'm going to open up CSGO and I'm going to see how this mouse feels to you. So it does have that joystick on the side. As far as I'm aware it will work like WAS and D. So that joystick will be able to do movement in game and then of course you aim with the mouse itself. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to I think. I hope it's going to work out of the box. Like I said I don't have any options with the software to kind of reprogram it or tweak it if that happens. Uh, you happen to have to do that in order to make it work. But I will open up CSGO and see how this mouse feels to use. I spent a little bit of time playing CSGO with the ROG Chakram and what I can say is I really do quite like it. I think the joystick works really well. It is pretty much plug and play. Without the software, obviously I can't reprogram it, but by default it's set to the arrow key. So all I did in CSGO is change W, A, S, and D to the arrow key controls and then I could use the joystick to move around in game. One thing I did find out though is that the mouse is definitely more suitable for those of you that have larger hands. I personally normally hold in a fingertip grip, but when I use a fingertip grip with this mouse which I find is also better for playing FPS games with anyway I couldn't reach the joystick properly and still press the left and right click buttons which obviously you do need to fire so I did have to hold the mouse with the palm grip so I did find it quite difficult to use I think if you're someone that has smaller hands you might struggle to use this mouse properly if you have a fingertip grip and want to use the joystick however if you have larger hands or if you use a palm grip you're not going to have any problems the joystick I found really actually quite intuitive to use. At the start of playing, I was definitely pretty useless with it. But as I got going into playing um, more gameplay, it definitely feels really good to move around. As you move the mouse to aim, your thumb almost automatically moves on the joystick to also turn as well. So I definitely do quite like that. The joystick is quite stiff to move though, so it does take a little bit of getting used to it. It's not quite as free moving as you would expect, like a games controller seems to be quite loose maybe because it's a little bit smaller it definitely feels a little bit more stiff uh, if you've got larger hands though or stronger hands I don't think you're going to have much of a problem though uh, but for me I think this mouse is a little bit on the large size which is unfortunate because I actually really quite liked using it so in general the ROG Chakram it's going to be their new flagship mouse the wireless connectivity I had no problems with it seems to connect perfectly fine to my laptop I didn't notice any delay or anything like that I had no problems playing CS go with it. The RGB lighting I do quite like. You obviously can customise it. You've got the little RGB lighting strip that runs around the front. It's a nice brightness. I haven't been able to test the battery life but up to 79 hours is really good for a wireless mouse. Obviously you have the key wireless charging as well so you can just kind of leave it on a compatible mouse mat and you don't really have to worry about ever plugging in which is quite a nice feature. They've obviously got the modular switches. I personally prefer the lighter Omron switches that come in the mouse by default but if you want to change to some stiffer switches you can do that. It seems to be very easy to do. You've got the kind of transparent body. I'm not too sure whether I like the look of the fact that the uh, the body and the keys and things are transparent but it does definitely help to show you that it is a modular mouse. But in general, yeah, I do quite like it. Obviously, this isn't a full review. It's just kind of an unboxing and a quick overview because I haven't got it for an extended period of time. But let me know what you think of this mouse, whether you're going to pick one up. I think £150 is obviously quite a lot of money. Isn't a confirmed price point yet, but we're going to have to find out in the future whether it's going to be more like £120 or whether it's going to be more up towards the £200 price mark. But let me know what you think of that. Do you, would you personally spend that much money on a mouse? It does seem to have a really good list of features. The sensor and everything from 
what I could tell while I was playing CSGO seems to be really accurate. It doesn't seem to have any kind of nasty hiccups there, any kind of uh, lag because of the wireless connectivity. It seems to have a reasonable lift off distance and things like that. So I do definitely really quite like this mouse and hopefully I do get a full review sample so I can take a bit of a closer look at it and spend a little bit more time with it. If you like this video from KitGuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from KitGuru, make sure to hit the subscribe button and please also remember to press the bell icon as well and you'll get a notification every time a new video goes live.